Hey friends, it is 5.30 a.m. on February 1st, 2020. We're going to run the Piney Woods Trail Fest 50K. Mm -hmm. And this is my first 50K, and I think your first ultra full stop. Well, yeah, if I finish today, which I don't know why I won't because I'm determined, this will be my first official fi uh, ultra to finish. I've, I've started two others and didn't finish them, so I'm, I'm finishing. He brought snacks and a book. I actually forgot my book, but that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll see you when we get there. Yeah, we'll see you when we get there. So I think I'm already going to have to take Keanu off because this little house back here is the bathroom and there's absolutely no porta potties. Uh, and there's a line out the door and it's the hour before the race starts. But here's the little hangout for before and after. All the back check areas. Whew. There's the start. Whew. Sorry if I'm shaking, I'm shivering. All right. Go in that, go in that age group. Been like this for like a half a mile. Water's freaking freezing. And there's no way to get around it. it reminds me why I fucking hate trail running. It's the end of the first loop. Well, first 10 mile loop. So I don't know if there was poorly marked trails or it was just short, but my watch says exactly 10 miles as I crossed that line. I know there was a dude who came out complaining somewhere just after the swamp that he put in a couple extra miles. So I don't know if we go there and they fixed it and I skipped something. I'll do it twice to make it up. But here we are on the second loop. Whew. All right. Mile 11. I'm going to have socks for wood again after that. Mile 12. Mile 13. And it's not right. Mile 14. Got another mile or two till the freaking swamp. Oof. Oof, that is right. I think we're about to lap some people. Which is interesting. I didn't think I was going that fast. But I do know there must be a little behind me. They're probably gonna pass me if I start talking too much, so. I'll shut up. 
here we are. All right, here we are, mile 15. Just hooked a fruit back there. Just about fell on my face and now my right knee kind of hurts. So that's not good, but we're halfway-ish there. It kind of sucks though, because came out of that swamp at mile six. So we gotta be almost there. Okay. Get back to you in the swamp when I need to complain about something. All right. All right, so mile 16. Stage station up here. We went straight across the road into the damn pool. But they closed it and replaced it with this out and back here and wherever it goes down this road. What you gotta say? I'm pretty okay. Okay. Here we go. Alright, well this is where the swamp came out. I put that sign up there. So I know we won't get lost. Just at mile 17. Okay, we're mile 18. Whew. I am exhausted. Everything hurts. Whew. So, my knee is freaking killing me whenever I run after the twist. Gives me an awkward shuffling, lurching gait, which I'm sure is not good for every other joint. So, I don't know, I'm gonna push it till the end of this lap and maybe just power walk out the wrist. This doesn't really hurt when I walk yet. So, I forgot how hard this was compared to road running. It's not just a straight, you know, jog along. You have to pay attention to your footing, jump around rocks and stuff, and don't fall on these damn roots. Or these roots, or those ones, or those ones. And I am sweating like crazy, even though it's like 45 degrees. So, anyway, enough complaining. Onwards and upwards. Here we are at 19. I can hear them announcing stuff over that way somewhere. My goal which I've achieved thus far is to get to the end of the damn second loop without getting lapped by some overachiever. Nineteen point eight. That's start of third loop. I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty hard to go again on a third loop, but Got to do it. Although, I got to say, if you're at the end of a race and there's people coming through trying to refill their packs and stuff, get the hell away from the damn aid station so that they can get to it. Don't just stand there and stare at them while you're standing in the damn way. Anyway, that's my rant. So, all right. Should be at 21. We're a little short. But, that lap was about even with the first one, so if we can keep that up, we'll be doing good, but whew, my knees loosened up a little bit, but not a lot. All right, here we go. Here we are at the aid station. They don't abandon their post. Let's see what we got. Oh, 
man. Oh, I could use a good healthy vomit. Oh, we're just about to 22. Oh, man. My hips hurt, and my knees hurt, and my damn ankles hurt, and my left shoulder, or I don't know, neck area hurts, but my hamstrings are cramping, so I got that going for me, which is nice. Oh man, we're getting there, although I... I haven't really been able to run anything so far this lap. It just hurts so bad. My heart rate spikes. So, maybe a little slower, but I think we're just gonna be condemned to walking this last lap. Doing pretty good. Between 15 and 17 minute miles. It's not great, obviously, but It'll get there. All right, onwards and upwards. So here's a teaching moment to help pass the time. So when you're running this kind of race, or really any race, uh, you'll see people run around the outside of the curve versus around the inside. And uh, I don't know, someone figured it out in a marathon that's you know reasonably choppy like that. It'll add a quarter to a half a mile to your route if you don't quote unquote run the corners. Meaning you run this corner and if there's a turn the other way you go from the apex of this turn or I forget what the in, in, inside apex is. Yeah like right here rather than going around this curve and then going around the outside of that one you go straight from this corner to that corner. The insides you'll cut off a significant chunk of the route anyway that killed about 30 seconds <laughs> here we go so we're at i don't know 23 or so it's another teachable moment so we don't feel good there's two two things that usually cause me not to feel good amongst other stuff but either lack of electrolytes or being dehydrated meaning not having enough water so the way to check and see which one's happening to you at any given time is to look at your hands. So if you are in need of electrolytes, your hands will be swollen and you will be able to tell because they'll be all poofy and red usually. If you're in need of water, well, your veins will be popping out. If there's both, well, then you probably won't be standing. So, I'm pretty sure I got that right. It might be the other way, but yeah. So, anyway, next time you don't feel good in the race, assuming it's not gastro stuff, like you're feeling dizzy or weak or something, take a look at your hands and fix whichever issue it is, and you'll probably perk right back up. So, anyway, we'll keep rolling here. I guess I forgot to say, my hand is really neither at this point, so it's a bad example because I'm reasonably well balanced. I should have done it earlier when I was desperately in need of chugging the rest of my pack of water. So, anyway. All right, well, just because I feel like rambling, I wanted to point something out. This is kind of in stark contrast to the Houston Marathon that we posted a couple weeks ago, but there's no one ahead of me. And unless someone is catching up, there is no one behind me. I can't hear anybody. All I can hear is the wind blowing through the trees and the occasional squirrel or mouse or something right around. It's incredibly peaceful. So if you come out to one of these and you're in desperate pain, make sure you take the time to realize where you are and what's going on. Because this is a an incredible break from 
It's bullshit hubbub of living in Katy in Houston, Texas. Oh, we're just about to 25. I need some gators. I've got some before, but they always cut off circulation to my foot. So if you happen to know of any gators that will fit size 14 or 15 shoes that don't, you know, squeeze the life out of your feet, please let me know. That would be very cool. And also, it was all right when it was cold, and, you know, a little breezy. But now that it's like stagnant and warmed up, there are freaking bugs everywhere. But that's cool. We're getting there. We're almost. Whew. I've not seen another soul since the last aid station. Which is good. So, I just passed that aid station back there. And that's where the they changed it from the swamp to the out and back. And going around this bend here. I have a conspiracy theory that the girls were either misinformed or not paying attention. And this is how you were always supposed to go. But we'll never know. But we just passed 26. We're almost to 26.2. 5.34. If I'm not too much mistaken, that's my trail marathon PR. I think a lot, well, not saying much I've only done like one of them and that was I want to say almost six hours 550 something so that's awesome we got three and a half or four miles to go if it's still as short as it was in the last couple of laps so this is the first time I've done an ultra in like five years, so that's cool. I mean, it's only my third, I guess, but still, pretty cool. Apparently walking 14, 15 minute miles is not going to do it because there's two guys that are about to catch me. I don't know if you can see them or not. I had to get this. There's about a quarter mile of the sand stuff. Which is tedious. Alright, we're shit 28. Only one of those guys has passed me thus far. Unfortunately, it was the one that I'm pretty sure is in my age group, so that sucks if is the reason that I don't get an age group award. But the older gentleman is still, I don't know, I assume he's plugging along back there somewhere. I've tried to run a few times and it hurts so bad. My knee is still okay walking, even at a brisk pace. Ooh, it's just sharp all over the kneecap, which is not good. So, almost there. So, I thought it was my glasses, but it's not. It's my freaking eyes are going blurry, which isn't good. Um, it's only ever happened to me once before, and I just didn't realize what it was. I thought it was my glasses, like I said, but it was about mile 40 of the Blazing 700K. I don't know how, five, six years ago, however long it's been. And so I, what did I do? I took like three or four salt sticks and chugged my entire pack of water in like a mile and cleared up and I had to pee finally after about 10 hours. So it just goes to show you, even though it's freaking freezing out here, keep an eye on your hydration. Although my pack is bone dry my bottles are almost empty so that means I've taken in what two two liter packs and two bottles of water and 
little over six hours. Huh. So we're getting close. We're heading to this bridge up here. And then it's like a three quarter mile loop around to the freaking finish. Whew. 29 and a half. Trying for some slip and slide. Some freaking mud and now my knee feels like it's about to lock up. I wonder where lunchbox is. As far as I haven't caught her yet. Although I'm having some pretty good troubles. I haven't caught anybody actually on the third loop, which is lame. So maybe they were there was a cutoff or something. Anyway, I'm rambling. See you at the finish. You so, want to go first? Congratulations. Yeah, I got third in my age group out of three people in my age group. <laughs> Been there. Pretty cool. And then the middle. They're the same except mine has 50k <clears throat> etched in the back. So, not bad. Um, I guess I'll go first because I think you're going to rant for longer than me. Go for it. I'm gonna have to. The only thing I can think to take off, aside from what she's gonna rant about, but I mean, that's neither here nor there, is the lack of bathroom stuff. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to give it four out of five Keanu's. You're generous. And uh, I don't know, I rambled on long enough. You got my gist of it, so go ahead. Okay, so. I am giving this race, and I hate to do this, but I'm giving it one out of five, and here's why. I'm taking one and a half Keanu's off because on the first loop, there was a woman who fell around mile six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half, I don't know, and the, she, her friend was crying. They were both crying. She dislocated her so shoulder. She, they were trying to find the race director's number um, and they couldn't find it and you're on a trail and so I stood there for a minute with them and tried to help but then I realized I couldn't help I can't I'm not putting the shoulder back I can't do that so I went on I took her bib number I had several runners run past me and every time I said hey there's a runner down her number her bib is whatever she's at whatever mile please tell them when you get here I got to the finish line at two hours and 45 minutes which is really slow We'll get to that. I went to the race director and said, did you find this girl? And she goes, I don't know what you're talking about. 45 minutes and nobody knew she was out there. Now, and, and, and more than that, like when I left her, I did hear sirens at some point. Her friend may have just called 911. But even so, the race director didn't, the, the race people, whatever, the crew, they didn't know she was out there for 45 minutes. There's no emergency contact number. I have to take off one and a half of that. Because it's a trail, there's routes everywhere. Okay, yeah. then I'm going to take one Keanu off for the signage. That was driving me crazy. It was not as good as it could have been. And actually, for me, I spend a, a bit of time looking down because it's a trail. And it was a it was, it was actually kind of technical in some spots. Some parts were paved, but some parts were fairly technical. And um, the signage just wasn't that good. Y you would get confused. There were a couple times I would have to go one way or the other. And then... Um, 
when I asked him, the first loop was different from the second loop. So you come around around mile, I don't know, six. We talked about that quite a lot. Okay, whatever. So I'm going through there, <clears throat> walking in ankle deep water. The race director didn't mention walking through ankle deep water and there's no signage. And the only reason I can think that there's no signage is because the race crew didn't want to go out there and put it up. So I actually turned around and walked back about a quarter mile and just looked around and was just, I mean, that, that, that more than anything just killed the motivation for me because I was not sure where I was. And then when I came around on the second loop, they sent me a different direction and I didn't go through that portion. And then also my, um, I, I, my watch data was wrong. So that's another Keanu off the signage. I'm taking, um, half a Keanu off because I thought the aid, stage, aid stations were underwhelming. One or two of them were so far off the path that it wasn't even worth going over there. Um, and I'm also taking off a Keanu for the fact that there's not a single bathroom on a 10 mile loop. That also affected my race because I needed to go and had to kind of, excuse me, walk squeeze my way through the second loop. And when I got back here at about 5.20, I was like, I don't even want to do this. This is not, I just didn't want to finish. So this race allows you to drop. So I took advantage of it and I dropped to the 20 and my race was done about 5.34 or something. I don't know. Um, I just, I'm disappointed and actually kind of glad that this isn't my first ultra. So other than that, the trails are beautiful and the people were very nice and um, I enjoyed it for myself. I felt like I gave it a really good effort. I, I had some issues with not having trail shoes today. That was a mistake. I just don't have any that fit. But I, I had to walk every muddy patch and that was really demoralizing. And also date scary because I, I almost slipped several times. So other than that, I mean, it was a beautiful day. I'm really happy for him um, getting third place. And, you know, it is what it is. I, I think I'd like to do one more of this company's races to see if this was just an outlier or maybe I'm just a big baby. I don't know. But yeah, that's all I got. Yeah. I didn't see the woman that fell, obviously, but I did see two or three ambulances <clears throat> probably about the time you. Looked at my pastor. Um, Poor yeah, woman. I just don't feel good. I'm so sorry. Anyway, this is going to be a long video. Oh well. Um, keep it real. <laughs> Thanks for watching.